Okay, my outstanding friends, Roger once again. We have exceeded the speed of light, faster than the speed of light. That's not allowed, but it is done. We did it. Okay, light is light. I don't care what color it is, it's light. This is red pulsed laser light. All right, that's the speed it's going right now. And it would never go any faster than that, except for we put it through a Venturi. And here's what happened at that point. It went faster than the speed of light. It's accelerated right out of its own wave. And there is a particle here, and we could see the particle, and then we could see the particle actually divide and then recombine. That's fission fusion. That's nuclear energy right at the desktop. Just this one little set of pictures here blows physics right out of the water. Light does spin. That's the particle. Blue is extremely fast and very high energy. You can see it's either expanded or it's either going faster here and slower up here or vice versa. I don't care which way, but it is slowing down or speeding up one or the other. Here we can see there's no question it's speeding up. That's what it started out like. If you can't understand that, you know, ask your kid. Ask some 10-year-old. Now, the particle coming out of there is this particle right here. And it exploded and separated into its black and its white particle, which is the muon and the, and the uh, electron shower, precisely what CERN wants to see. We did it. That's the black ball. That's the white ball. When they're attached together, here's when they slam into the venturi and they divide the white the black ball stays a black ball the white one turns into white showers precisely what they asked for at cern all right all of physics is based on the speed of light being constant where we know it is not now and it does slow down and it is slowing down as it comes towards us which means the red shift and hubble it, the hubble's law is is absolutely meaningless we have no idea how far these distant things are from us because space is loaded with particles and light slows down as it passes through them. It's not now that everything is going faster than the less speed of light away from us and everything is going away from us so that puts us at the center of the galaxy or the center of the universe which is just, everything's just completely wrong and they just continue to stay with this nonsense. I can. I just showed you I can accelerate the speed of light easily. And we know it slows down. I showed you that too. So this is nonsense. And the space is loaded with those particles that I showed you that are light. This is the end of the story. Hubble is totally wrong. Einstein was wrong. Bohr was wrong. Everything in physics is completely wrong now. we got to start from scratch again. All right, here's what happened. Hubble saw that the light was was shifted to the red, which means literally it's slowing down. He said, no, 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 everything expanding away because light cannot slow down. That's what Einstein said. And space is a vacuum, so there's nothing for it to slow down in. Well, space is not a vacuum. It's 100% saturated with electrons and photons, which we know because they hit us. So particles that flow through there are being obstructed. They're pushing and shoving and pushing and shoving, and they're slowing down. The, the Things are not expanding away from us faster than the speed of light. The light is slowing down. Simple as that. And there's other areas that's going to slow down more because there's denser areas than other areas where there are open areas. The light will come through quicker. I agree with that 100%. But it's, it is interacting with all of the things that are in space. Anytime you see glow, it means there's particles, there's interaction, there's pushing and shoving. And that's what you see in a swirling of our galaxy. First of all, here we are, there's our sun, scrubbing through the galaxy on the arm of the Milky Way. You see that little scrubby looking spot coming off? That's because it's spinning like this and it's pushing against it, scrubbing it off. We're trying to catch up to it because it's dark matter, it's gravity. We are being pulled towards the sun, spinning as we go forward, scrubbing our atmosphere into all the particles the sun is scrubbing into too. And we're additionally scrubbing through the particles the sun is sloughing off as we hit into it, the solar winds and all that. But we are getting slammed with radiation. And this is how we get slammed. It shoots out all its particles. Right around the sun, where it scrubs itself, 
it takes back all the big stuff and lets the little stuff out, the photons and cosmic rays and ultraviolet and all that stuff comes out. But the big chunks go back towards the sun. But it's millions of degrees out here, 7,000 degrees on the sun's surface because it's scrubbing. We're scrubbing also against the particles that are coming at us. 2,700 degrees out here, 100 or so on the surface. This is the interaction zone. We're scrubbing these particles, and this creates ions. Ions are electrons. Electrons are what photons and everything is made of is the particles that are shooting out of the sun. They're electrons and photons, and then, of course, there's particles of solar dust, they call it, and, you know, whatever. But it, mostly you don't get big chunks coming out. They get pulled back in. As you see these loops come out and they come back. Those are the big chunks. But they slam, they snap off these little bits and go flying out. And as they do, they smash into us. Now you see um, the um, aurora borealis, the northern lights, is because these particles are hitting our particles. And there's the magnetic fields. And that's why they're, they're interacting. They're just pushing to shove, and it's glow. I could show you this. So let me show you something. All right, these gases are interacting with a Tesla coil. Watch this. I'm going to move it across in front of that Tesla coil, which is nothing more than a whole series of electrons shooting out just like, just like the sunlight hits us. And it excites the gases. This, that's exactly what happens in the northern lights. You see this? Try to explain this to me. Here's the Earth. It's whatever. Let's say it's top right 100 degrees or so. You go up in space, it goes to minus 60. Minus 60 degrees up there. Minus 130 degrees. Then you get out to here, the thermosphere. And it's 932 degrees Fahrenheit. And then all of a sudden it gets up to 2,700 degrees at the, at the very end. That's because of the scrub. How they can't understand this? I have no clue how they could possibly think it would be 2,700 degrees out here if there was nothing that they're scrubbing against. It makes no sense whatsoever. Now this is where the aurora is seen right here because the particles are hitting our particles that are basically, there's a couple of different resonance layers of our atmosphere and that's why they, they they have a break between them because they're pushing to shove, push to shove, push to shove all the way down to earth and then the earth sucks all, all those electrons down but when they hit they bounce back they hit down a little further bounce back hit down a little further bounce back and then they hit the earth and it, it absorbs them but here's where the first colorful radiation impacts because that's the most intense spot right there. Up here you don't have enough gases to interact well. Here you have gases and you have particles. That's where you get your auroras. Okay, this is the new atomic theory. That's it. That's, not, that's, that's it, folks. Dipole electron flood means everything there is is made of the smallest particles there is, which is an electron. They will normally never be separated. There will always be the black muon part attached to the what we always thought was an electron. We call it electron neutrino, call it whatever you want. I call the pair of them together an electron. Now, this is a polar, a polar particle. It can be separated. The muon can be separated from the electron. We have done it. Now, two of them back to back, is, and these are nothing more than tiny, tiny, tiny bar magnets that weigh brrr, atomic mass units. A photon travels in, it spins basically, and there's three primary colors, and then there's a whole batch of other colors that bounce, but primarily there's three that we work with. The red, the green and the blue and they go up in energy from the red being the weakest the green being powerful and the blue being way off the chart powerful now you see the little dots in front of the white ball as it goes forward the white ball is a concussor the white ball is an exploder it's a it's an interactor the black ball is is dark matter it literally is dark matter it's a muon it does not emit so it never radiates anything it does not absorb. It doesn't absorb anything that I can see. It does not concuss. It, when it slams into something, it just sort of rolls out of the way. 
It doesn't reflect anything. It's just black. It gets in the way of other things so that you can see it when we get it manifested in its photon phase and then we saw it separate. So I showed you all these things. Protons are only made of 1839 of these particles and they're in a ball with all the white ones pretty much surrounding the black core. And that was what you would call one atomic mass unit. Photons are two electrons, so that's all. I believe, and it's not absolutely certain, but I believe there's about 1839 in a proton. Now it could be 1837, it could be 1841, but it's going to be an odd number. The even numbers are the neutrons. And they're only one more, or one less, whatever. And these, the odd ones have a polarity, either a positive polarity or a negative polarity. It depends on if they're over the neutral or under the neutral. Electron flood theory, that's it, folks. All right. If it's bragging, it's bragging. But if it's true, it ain't bragging. That's what I've always been told. And it's true. I've done this forever. I, I knew in 1968 that there was no solid positive core. It had to be dipoles. So everything I talked about was dipoles. And I wrote all kinds of papers. I, I, I've been the root on this. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. As much as anybody else. I'll talk to anybody about it. Maybe I'm, making, maybe I'm just an idiot. I'm making mistakes about everything. But I don't think so. I think everything is this simple and that's it folks if this is correct and what I was showed was correct and if this is this simple or well, the simple thing I showed is also simple but it's real so let's get some free power and get, get people to keep stay in their own countries make them happy let them grow food for free let them clean their water for free let them get their air cleaned for free let them have energy for free let them be able to drive around for free let them be cooled and heated and everything else for free because if you can create energy for free case is closed the world becomes livable once again